Hi everyone, today I want to show you a couple of functions from analysis situs that could potentially be useful if you are dealing with uh, somewhat uh, dirty geometries. Sometimes we have to work with quite broken CAD files. Whichever format we have, is it step or IGES format like uh, here in this example and this is one of their uh, like benchmark examples taken from public source. Uh, you can see that what do we have here? We have here quite dirty geometry. So basically uh, the visualization here already shows you that something is completely broken and uh, if you see this dark gray color and the corresponding face is not selectable in the viewer like this face is uh, selectable but this is not selectable it means that the face is uh, inverted. If you check the orientation field of this face, you will see that all the normals uh, taken into account their topological orientation are kind of pointing inward uh, the material and that's not quite what you want to have because according to the validity rules in any CAD geometry for a valid solid you need to have a consistent normal field uh, pointing outward uh, the material. So this is one thing, then you can see that there are surfaces like this. Uh, this is a kind of a grid. Instead of rendering a surface in the shading mode, uh, we have just isoparametric lines rendered for, for our surface. And you can also check it in the domain viewer and you can see here that uh, the domain, this parametric rectangle of our face is disconnected. It's not closed and that's uh, clearly a problem. So I did some experimentation with this model a few weeks ago and I found it quite interesting that you can, I mean, even having such a dirty model, you can still do something, something with even that quality of, of the model and end up having something more or less useful. So let's see what do we have here. For example, uh, what I can start uh, with, I can go to the part node, to the parameters and then uh, probably just temporarily uh, disable visualization of back faces. So I don't want to have these uh, gray colors for the moment because I want just to see what this model is supposed to be and you see that it's sort of like a uh, blue color here and all the faces become selectable but if I check the uh, face normals then you can see that okay the normals they seem to be fine but actually whenever you see this blue color here it means that the corresponding normal field is reversed or the face is reversed and you can also see it from the uh, parametric domain for example you see that the face is reversed and what it means it means that uh, you should in your mind uh, reverse the orientations of the corresponding vectors which you see here and uh, if you reverse them mentally then you will uh, you'll have all those uh, vectors pointing inside the material and that's uh, the problem so how to fix that we can go and select this face and then invert its orientation like that you can also see that uh, the face now it inherits the color from the part and the original color of the face is somehow lost but we are not going to pay any specific attention to that fact uh, instead i just go and re-enable this back face and you see what now this face feels better then i can select this face and do the same trick like i invert it here and also uh, this one. So this way I go and invert all my faces so that I do not see that uh, dark gray color anymore and at least uh, this part of the model now looks a bit better. So basically I can just go and check all these uh, gray uh, faces in the viewer and invert them. And this face on the bottom, by the way, it's it's fine because if I look at this face from the outside uh, of the enclosed volume, then it has its color and uh, the problem is rather with this uh, cylindrical uh, face here, this cylindrical feature. And by the way, you can see that it's a spline surface. This is not also quite okay because, you know, whenever you see something planar, in your shape you would expect it to be like analytical plane 
and there is something else to do about it but let's forget about it for the moment and just go and invert this phase all right so now we have uh, this a bit better model so what i am going to do now is i'm going to to open another process, another uh, session of analysis CTUS and to try to assemble a new valid model in this new session. So I have uh, these two instances of analysis CTUS right now. Let's see what I can do about it. I'm just going to select all the faces that I consider valid in the original model, like here. And using the context menu, I'll just save them to BREP. And BREP is an internal format of Open Cascade Kernel. It's something that you might want to use instead of STEP or IGES if you want to transfer your geometry without any changes that could be uh, induced by the translator itself. So right now I'm going to save this uh, set of faces to my desktop. It's going to be just a te temporary file. Uh, let me call it set1.brep. Now I can open it here and actually I can uh, use this brep plus button if I want to append more objects to the existing scene. So this is a function to use. There we go. And you can also see from the color codes here uh, that this part of the model is quite fine in the sense that okay there are some edges in my faces and they are uh, colored with black color, it means that uh, these edges are shared. Basically there are some problems as well, like here we see that there is some uh, missing sharing and this is potentially a problem. And also here something for the seam edge and I think it's also like a spline surface, yeah, it's quite complex tube-like spline surface and there are some Re edges in this model and uh, if you want to use uh, such a model for mesh generation for example you might end up having some troubles on this image because uh, the corresponding triangles in the surface triangulation they would not be uh, what's called conformal uh, they might you might end up having uh, you know neighboring triangles not sharing their nodes although they are supposed to be uh, to be shared and it means essentially that this part is not going to be watertight although some measures especially some advanced measures could potentially tolerate such inaccuracies in your model but this is not something you would like to rely on because uh, the more perfect and watertight geometry you have the better chances are that you will succeed in your simulation and you will have like good enough discrete representation of your model uh, so here to fix that we can go to the modeling tab and use uh, uh, sewing functionality. Another name of this button or this functionality is face stitching. And you can uh, specify the tolerance here to kind of increase uh, the geometric inaccuracy on this edge or on a vertex to consider like near coincident entities as shared, as the same entity basically. So we can just use the default tolerance and if your geometry is good enough, if the geometric entities are close enough to each other, then you can use a very tight tolerances. So here it worked, although you can see that there are some, we still have some gaps in the model, uh, we still have some uh, free edges, but these uh, free edges, they really come from other features of the model that are missing here. So basically, uh, you need to go and possibly find the missing features like here in this uh, tube feature. We also had this tiny cylinder which I simply forgot to export. So what I can do now is I can just go and select this tiny feature here and save it to another file like set2 and then I can add it here. And there we go. We see that this feature now appears here. We again have this red edge it means that sharing information is missing so again we can go to the modeling and uh, see this inaccuracy uh, stitch those faces together now it's more watertight 
To make your work a bit more efficient, especially in the context like this, when you try to reassemble your final model from the set of uh, dirty pieces, so to say, uh, you can also go and possibly select all these faces that you have already processed and just erase them from the model so that uh, you will not export them again by mistake because this whole scene is quite complicated so you can go here in the modeling uh, tab and just you know delete all those faces so now all the faces that i've just processed they appear on the right in the different model which i am currently composing and the original uh, model i treated here as sort of like geometry database this is a data source uh, from which i can grab some geometric entities, especially all those uh, nice spline surfaces. I do not really want to remodel them because they are quite complicated and you need to have quite advanced uh, geometric modeling system to uh, have this sort of this sort of surface because if you try to remodel it, especially with open casket, if you try to uh, kind of build a through section or skin a new surface, uh, the chances are that you will have some defect in the continuity defect in the you know curvature map like here if i check the curvature map then i see that uh, basically this is a quite a good surface you do not have any valleys or hills uh, in, in the surface and also the parameterization of the surface is quite regular so it's really something i want to reuse but the problem here is that uh, this particular surface is not working perfectly here in this model because of what? Because of this uh, parametric domain that, that happens to be degenerated for some reason. What we can do, we can select this surface here and then run a command make surface S. So I am just extracting the host surface explicitly so that this surface that I see in the host uh, viewer of analysis situs becomes available as an object in my scene and what i can see from here for this particular module is that uh, the natural bounds of this spline surface uh, you know mean and max isoparametric lines according to its own parameterization they follow precisely the edges of the face that i want to have like i do not need even to trim this surface I do not need to put some extra edges on the surface in order to get uh, my face for modeling. And I can really benefit from this fact and I can just go and make face out of this surface. So there we go. We have this face F. And that's a new face. That I can use instead of our original face in my model, and I can also export it to VRAP right from here, from the context menu if I invoke it on the object in the data panel. So I can go and save it to VRAP, and then it's going to be like set free save, and I'm going to open it here. And you see that now I have this face and if I check its parametric domain it's perfect because this face was constructed, or it, actually it was reconstructed and the edges here they were taken from the natural bounds of the spline surface. And here for this face even selection doesn't really work. So yeah it's, it's a bit problematic even to remove it but okay let's forget about it here. Seems like this face was more or less fine because you see that there is uh, this parametric domain uh, but uh, it's sort of close but it's also not manifold because you see that there is a vertex here in this parametric domain uh, and the incidence of this vertex the number of incident edges at this vertex is more than two and that basically means that uh, the corresponding vertex is not manifold and you can see that measure, this visualization measure has some troubles with this, uh, with this uh, tube. So again, the trick to fix it is uh, just the same. Uh, we just go and create the surface. And then we make a face out of it. And then we export it. There we go.
So now you see that something starts to appear here in this viewer. Now I can remove this face from the viewer because I don't want to have it anymore. There is also room for some extra modeling, like there is a simple hole here. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it's a spline curve that could happen to have some meaning. And if it's like that, then potentially you might want to reinsert it to the model. And for that you might want to like cut it again in the model. But you could do that later on, once you have like a solid model here. If you have a perfect solid model, then you can open it in some design system or even here in Analysis Situs with some uh, with little effort, you can go and cut this hole again. So some remodeling might be required in order to reinsert some features that could have happened to be eliminated by this reconstruction process. Uh, but to reinsert a feature is way more easy than to remodel something like a spline surface where you have to be really careful about uh, its quality, parameterization, how it plays with the rest of the model, if you have the desired uh, level of continuity and all these uh, things to keep in mind. So here I am, uh, I am done with that surface, I can go and delete this face now. So as you can see, after some simple manipulations, you can improve the quality of your geometry. Although some issues are still remain in this geometry, you can uh, potentially overcome them if you go to the modeling system and using uh, this um, basic model, you can like go and reinsert some features into it. So in this whole business here, uh, we tried to reuse as much as possible from the input data set. And we didn't really want to lose all these nice spline geometries that were uh, designed uh, very well in terms of surface quality. But uh, then uh, when it came to uh, data translation, something happened and they uh, completely lost uh, their good uh, parametric boundaries. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching this quite specific video. I only hope that it was not totally like a waste of time and next time you come across some really dirty geometry you will recall that there are some ways, some methods how you can try to exploit what you have to the max extent. So that you will not have to remodel the whole thing from scratch just because of some tiny defects or artifacts that could be easily eliminated. See you next time in the following episodes.